Okay. All right. Okay. Great. Uh, so good morning once again for all of you who've joined in for class today. Um, we will be having three lectures as of today for those who, who've also joined us for the e-learning. Um, uh, welcome and glad to know that you are learning at your pace. Um, quite encouraged to see some of you following through weekly um, through these classes and attempting the questions and the checks that are there. Um, so do keep learning and enjoy the course. And for us who are online right here with us, welcome. We have three classes uh, today uh, going, going one to another. Um, and we are going to be looking at a at a fresh new section um, in the course on marriage and family. And uh, I am, uh, just for you to follow through, I am on um, uh, page 125, 125, and we're going to be looking at challenges in marriage. In this uh, fresh section that we are um, starting on with, we're going to be looking at um, uh, challenges in marriage today we will focus partly on uh, what are some of the common challenges that uh, marriages face. Uh, the second thing we're going to be looking at is biblical instructions that uh, we can look into to face these challenges. And third, biblical instructions for specific common challenges that happens in marriage okay so that's how we're going to be focus what are we going to be focusing on and next week we're going to be looking at briefly on how we can press forward by keeping or release by releasing the past or keeping away what has been of the past okay so today we're just we're looking at overcoming the challenges that one would have in marriage okay uh, so just to begin with, I think I'd like to open uh, the class today to hear from you from maybe your own experience or from the experience of other members, uh, maybe in your family or in a church that you are or among friends that you see that you have. What are some of the common challenges that uh, people face within marriages? What what have you noticed as things that could come over people and their families, maybe quite unexpected, uh, unplanned, but yet have been, um, uh, you know, uh, hardships uh, that uh, that would have come in? So, would uh, would you like to? This is just a, a, a quick time of sharing, and uh, so that you know we could all connect. Um, and, and, you know, be involved as well. Yes, Samuel, please go ahead. <clears throat> um, thank you, Pastor. Um, most of it, uh, I think it's from, from my own uh, personal journey. Uh, so I, I, uh, my wife and I, uh, we were in Bangalore, just the two of us, uh, even though my wife is from here, from Sikkim itself, we were in Bangalore for... Um, for a long time, almost uh, seven, eight years, just the two of us, uh, we didn't plan to have kids. And it was almost like a bachelor kind of life. Even though we were married, we could skip making dinner at home, order pizzas, uh, you know, have, we'd go out whenever, so all of that. And then we came back home and we had to live in, we had to start living with our parents. And uh, that was a huge change. That was a huge change. And then uh, now that we were parents, and then uh, you know the parents started making a lot of decisions. Not just parents, and there were you know, uh, elders in the family, like elder sister, elder brothers. Uh, so we would have to kind of go according to what the family decides. And then um, we decided to have uh, our first child. Uh, so there were like a lot of big, like we had career changes, uh, family setup changes, and then a new member in the family. Uh, it was a huge uh, toll for me personally. All of those changes almost caused a rift in my marriage. Uh, so we had a very rough uh, two years, uh, at least the first two years, my first child was born uh, and all of that. And... Um, and uh, thankfully, but uh, with God's grace, uh, uh, somehow you know, we were 
things slowly iron down. I mean, we ha- we learned a lot of lessons through hard times, uh, the wrong way, a lot of lessons through the wrong way. Um, but uh, God's faithful, and uh, He did not let our family break. Uh, and uh, God gave me wisdom uh, to kind of take back control. I, I, as the head of my family, I kind of had lost complete control as the head of the family. Uh, mm. Over over my wife and over my firstborn, uh, but uh, eventually I, I I somehow came to my senses and I could take back uh, control. Um, I could repent. Uh, God forgave me and uh, you know established me as the head of the family. And then uh, slowly, gradually, we could make changes. And we are in a very good place now. So it's been about seven years. I've been back home in Sikkim, and the first two years were rough. But, uh, but the last five years have been more or less. We're still settling. Um, some of the wounds are still healing. Uh, but uh, every day is better than uh, it, there's, there's uh, no refreshment, renewed joy, renewed strength. So in summary, I think big changes, uh, ex- external family members, uh, having a new kid, uh, career changes, geographical location, uh, all of those, and worse still, if if all of them happen at the same time, simultaneously, mm-hmm. if it happens at the same time, I think that that's a big turmoil. Thank you, thank you Sunny. Thank you so much for sharing that. That is, uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of us may uh, resound to what he said. You know, we we do. There are a lot of things that common things which Samuel said as has probably we've all gone through as well. Yes, uh, Charles. You raised your hand as well. Charles? Charles? Uh, Okay, Kennedy, I think um, you've also raised your hand all right thank you so much pastor um uh, this is not yes, from yeah uh personal can you hear me you're you're not uh, you're breaking up your voice is breaking up it's not constant so you can hear a few words no i can't hear you at all Okay, Charles, we're not able to hear you. Uh, Kennedy, would you like to would you like to uh, take over? Maybe like wait for Charles. Oh, yes, uh, yes. yes, Kennedy, yes. go ahead. Yeah, it's like when I think I posted something on the uh, like the divine challenges. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most of what what are... kind of divine challenges, Kennedy? If you could elaborate, yeah, that would be great. Um, it yeah, it takes like, long. Uh, it seems it takes long for me to to be had that side. Even yesterday, it happened. That... Sorry, Charles. We're not able to hear you. It would be great if you could put down the message on the chat because we can hear just parts and pieces of what you're saying. Would you kindly put it on a chat, please? Can I proceed? Yes, Kennedy, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I would say, like, in the event of things like uh, death. Death? Event, Is that what you said, death? Yeah. Oh, okay. Death, yeah. Yes. Uh, when, uh, when a family member dies, yeah, say like maybe a mother, yeah, the, the, the breadwinner, mm-hmm. it tends to weaken the family. Mm-hmm. Even though that mm-hmm. is inevitable, but it's something mm-hmm. that can be divinely challenging. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. 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 I, I, thank you, thanks, Kennedy. I agree. Okay. In fact, just last week, um, I had had a had a friend. Uh, an acquaintance of ours who was just 33 years old. Uh, she passed away after her delivery. Um, she delivered her baby and within within 24 hours, 
she passed away. So uh, that was a, 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 a rude shock, very devastating for everyone, you know, quite healthy. I mean, a, a young lady, 33-year-old, just walked into the hospital to deliver, but, uh, you know, was was uh, um, passed away within that. Yeah, so, yeah, those can be very significant challenges. Yes. Um, anybody else? I think someone else also raised their hand. Or anyone else who'd like to add in any other kind of uh, challenges that... Um, that may not have been discussed here as of yet. I'm sure we've all gone through something or the other. Um, and uh, each of us can encourage each other or, you know, we can connect to each other. Financial, yes, yeah, issues with finance can be, can be significant uh, challenges, absolutely. Yes, thank you, Sam. Anybody else? <coughs> when the family starts expanding, when you start having babies, uh, mm -hmm. start having children, and uh, if, if it's not well managed, it can disorientate the family. Mm -hmm. In terms of planning, in terms of organization, in terms mm -hmm. of even studying the world, but thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Kennedy mentioned when the family grows, when the family expands, um, and, uh, you know, it isn't managed very well. Okay, wonderful. All right. So um, I, I think what, uh, you know, we, we understand is that challenges don't escape anyone. Um, as a believer, as an unbeliever, all of us being here on the face of the earth do experience challenges. In fact, scripture tells us, Jesus tells us in John 16, 23, that in this world, you will have trials and you will have tribulations. It's not something that uh, we, we can escape. It's something that... Uh, that is there, that will be a common part of us. So he's, uh, the Lord himself told us and warned us that we will face challenges. But if you look in that first verse, the very first verse that's written on in that page in 125, I'm on page 125, it says, um, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world, and, you know, it says, I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. So in despite the challenges we are going through, the hope that each of us have, especially those of us who are in the Lord, is that he has overcome it for us. He has stripped of it, of its power, challenges of its power. It's not that it's not there. We do face it, but it's stripped off its power, and we become conquerors in the way that we uh, um, respond to those challenges. Um, I think so, uh, um, there have been additional um, responses of children. Children coming in can be a challenge. A family member having a chronic illness, absolutely, that itself can cause a challenge. Okay, um, So what scripture again shows us that that there is nothing that comes our way that is not something that is uncommon to man. Okay, um, So in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, the message version says, no test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. So the word temptation here is more to mean, uh, to mean uh, uh, putting to test something, putting to test maybe an experience or or going through something that can be testing, okay, rather than the common usage of the term temptation, where we are uh, we've been uh, we keep away from doing the will of God or, or evil. This is a proof of a test. Uh, that that is what the connotation here is, and it says you know that what we need to focus and remember is that God 
is with us and he will never let anything happen to us that we will not be able to handle but he gives us the grace fills us with the grace to help us come through it so when we look at challenges <clears throat> the important uh, i think the the position that we have to place ourselves in is how are we going to respond how are we going to react to challenges so you know each of us have had different challenges and each may be unique in its presentation uh, in the way that it uh, it comes to us some may be more stronger than the other may be more intense some may be milder some may be long lasting some may be shorter but nevertheless where whatever the challenges it really what we focus on and what we want to focus on is how do we respond to it so our challenges that come our way could either build us or make us or mold us into uh, moving into god's purposes or it can crush it can be a heavy load it can break us it can really be something that pulls us um to to a place of despair so it can either um you know just just put us flat on our faces or it can be used to wait upon god to ensure or to see what he makes out of us so if we look at uh, you know when we look back at our lives we know that we've grown as people because of some of these challenges imagine if we had a life without challenges if everything was it's perfect in its perfect sense we probably still be immature uh, emotional uh, you know self dependent people but because there there have been challenges and you know we we need to overcome this life in itself becomes i use the word colorful you know it it makes it balances things these challenges begin to help you see more of yourself about what capacities god has put inside of you to be able to work through something so i remember when you know my kids were young uh, i i never before i had my kids i never ever thought that i would be able to manage multiple things um at the home you know looking after the children i we i didn't have any house help uh, i i've haven't had house help for long for long periods of time so i've managed the home um, um uh, on my own looked after the children have done a part time job um helped elderly uh, uh, parents and all of this you know sometimes has been quite overwhelming but when i look back i begin to see that god did give uh, me the grace to go through some of that and also probably showed me certain things that i was able to do you know maybe it's just planning or just learning how to organize a certain day uh, you know being how, knowing how to delegate certain things so it teach it taught taught me how how to work through things uh, it helps challenges do help each one of us to grow okay and we do also find that when we learn to accept challenges it becomes far easier than resisting a challenge when we when we come to a place of fighting or you know maybe throwing our fist up or getting upset and getting angry working through a challenge becomes a lot more difficult so as believers we 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 come to a place of acceptance yes that there are challenges that there are instructions for us to follow even as we face those challenges which is what we will look at the next star and that we we also determine to stand up and face these challenges and use each of them to move ahead in what god wants to show us or god wants to make out of our families okay so 
just as you we all face challenges in different areas we also face challenges specifically in marriage and those are some of the things that we are going to be looking at today about what are common challenges that we face in marriage um i think there's someone else who's also added maxen said my main challenge i experienced in my family was j- being jobless when my job contract finished being unable to support my own family i can imagine how um difficult this is especially for a man because one of the major responsibilities for a man is to be able to provide and to be able to uh, give to the family and when there is a loss of job the kind of stress and the kind of frustration can be very very significant thank you thank you maxen for sharing okay so when we look at challenges in marriage we we remember something that we have made as a vow when we made a commitment to marry is that no matter what and uh, i don't know what kind of vows maybe each of us who have been married had have said depending on the um the church that we've been to uh, but in general there are the vows mean to say that whatever is to come you know whatever life has to hold whatever life brings uh, i will be there with you i am i have made the commitment to walk alongside with you so that's the commitment that one makes during marriage okay so some of the uh, uh maybe even as we go through this list i i know it it, it may not be a uh, you know an entire checklist but nevertheless i think it be- i believe it covers most most things okay so um like someone was saying often there are um you know when we get into marriage coming with multiple expectations you know dreaming that the world uh, that the that our life ahead is going to bring a lot of uh, goodness and uh, excitement and um you know all the dreams that we dreamt the castles that we built in the air all of that at points of time could come crashing down okay for many reasons probably there are expectations that have been unmet there have been um significant uh, uh changes within the situation in marriage maybe there are lifestyle changes there are financial situations that change there are personality changes um uh, you know there are there are uh, differences in the way that 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 a husband and a wife have understood each other so it could be so many but yet the the commitment that one makes is to walk forward in it for better or for worse whatever the issues could be so some of the issues that we can look at is again we said you know finances so um especially you know and and i see a lot of this even as as i work with people is that a, that when when two people get married uh, you know when there isn't a financial um maybe a compatibility in the families what happens could be that you know someone expects to have a life that they lived before marriage but when they come in to reality with with probably the kind of uh, um money that they're getting the financial situation that they may be facing there can be definite um, issues in their in the way that they live okay the finances get tight and they find it hard to come together uh to you know to to work out <clears throat> their lives using the finances that they have but what what we need to understand is this time it is important couple stick together and extending their faith to god for the provision and blessing that god can give okay like someone mentioned sickness sickness can be very unpredictable and sickness can come in very many ways it can be either a physical sickness it can be a mental illness it can be uh, a maybe a child or a um, yeah a child born uh, uh, having a developmental issue 
or having uh, any kind any any sense of a mental challenge that comes about so and a lot of this becomes unexpected okay or there could be as a result of an accident there can be uh, severe debilitate uh, a debilitate a debilitating um, uh, position that the person may be in so th there could be so many things that come into this uh, yet as scripture says you know we we in proverbs 18:14 it says your will to live can sustain you when you are sick okay so we are called to continue to hope in the healing provision of God and continue to have the hope in Christ. Okay, so that's that's another challenge that comes about. The other few things is when, um, when there are issues between couple and there doesn't seem to be, you know, you do all the best that you can to work things out together, to discuss it, the differences that there are, um, despite the talking about it, um, you know, things don't work out, and um, often they're quite convinced that that the that the that the relationship is not working out, and they feel quite dejected. This is a difficult place to be in, but uh, you know, to understand that a lot of us are there, you know, probably are are there still, where there is a lot of mismatch in the way that we understand one another. Yet. It is the time where you reach out to God and, and seek help for whatever you may need, you know, whatever differences that could be, to come to some place of agreement, some place of peace. So this could be ongoing. This can be happening, you know, on a regular basis. And that can be, uh, be throw a huge load on the, on the people within the relationship. The other uh, severe things could be where there is violence, where there, where there is abuse, either physical violence or domestic violence, where there is aggression, where there is abuse that happens, uh, you know, s mm, uh, arguments can turn to be physically violent, physically abusive, uh, tending to create such a strong rift in within the relationship where trust is broken, um, there isn't any sense of peace there. This, of course, is uh, are unhealthy situations and definitely is not something, it is a play, it is a, a, a situation that requires help and requires support and uh, uh, intervention in some way okay there also could be uh, irresponsibility and neglect that comes about um, you know just just having two people live in the house and one spouse one of the uh, partners are not taking on any form of a responsibility of the family or of anything that is expected of them the roles that they have to play or uh, you know helping out in uh, decisions in um, general planning ahead of the life of the family, the life of the children, and the entire stress and strain, the weight of these responsibilities is pushed on to that one member. And that gets very taxing. Um, you know, the, it, could, it could lead to you know, the responses could be either ways, where one just bears the weight, continues to bear the weight, but making them extremely weary and tired and um, uh, not having an impetus to move forward. Or it can it can cause, uh, you know, significant issues and rifts, uh, rifts as a result of, of one speaking out um, and, and getting the other to, to buck up. The other part, of course, the... the most painful of it all is where there is unfaithfulness or where there's abandonment as a result of infidelity. When the spouse is unfaithful or gets, you know, by getting into an affair or even falling into adultery can be extremely devastating uh, for, peop for, for the other person and for the rest of the family member. Okay, uh, issues. There are other kinds of challenges, like we we spoke about death, death of either a significant family member, or uh, 
uh, within within the equation there is definite uh, um, uh, as a result of either an illness or any other any other way where the, where death comes in that becomes extremely painful and can be quite challenging in the way that the family moves ahead so having seen all of this and like i said maybe we haven't covered as many but uh, but you know we continue to see that uh, these challenges could could arise there could be challenges happening even in the lives of children maybe uh, uh, you know whether there is drug use uh, addictions uh, in any member of the family drug use addictions um, forms of uh, gambling uh, all of that causing severe strain and stress within the relationship uh, or in the in the family so when when we look at this uh, our questions are um, yes these are there these are these are to come these are inevitable what should our responses be how can we um, move forward how can we respond in a way that will uh, help us Take take these challenges in a way that uh, of of the way that that is discussed in John sixteen thirty three. How can we overcome? How can we triumph? How can we move past this? And what we see is is the way that there are certain truths in God's word that helps us to face this. So going back to that same that same scripture that we started off with in John sixteen thirty three, um, it G Jesus says. He has overcome the world. And if we look at uh, 1 John 5, verse 1, I'm on page 128. Page 128. Uh, yeah, 128. Yeah, so it says, Every person who believes that Jesus is, in fact, the Messiah, is God begotten. If we love the one who conceives the child, we'll surely love the child who was conceived. Every God-begotten son conquers the world's ways. If you look at it in the NKJV version, it says, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So if you look at John 16, 33, it says, Jesus has overcome the world. And 1 John 5, 4, uh, sorry, John 5, 4 says, um, it's 1 John, sorry, I think there's a misprint there. It's 1 John 5, 4 that whoever or whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So as believers, we are born of God. In Jesus, we have been born of God. We are the child of God. And it says all children who are of God, every child of God, conquers, overcomes the world. So no matter whatever comes our way, we have an overcoming. We have been called to overcome and because God has overcome this for us. So that's that that helps us see and uh, stand in the truth that we are overcomers. We are conquerors. 2 Corinthians 2.14 says this. It says, God always leads us in triumph in Christ. He takes on that work for us to lead us in triumph in Christ. Now, does this mean that all the challenges will go away? Maybe not, but what it does is if you look at 2 Corinthians 2.14, it diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge. When we believe we stand in the triumph that God has for us, the fragrance of his knowledge, we know more about him. It disperses who he is, what his plans are, what he has for us through the challenges that we are going through. Okay, that also uh, now, now even even as we've said this, we know that yes, God leads us in triumph. We also go to believe God in uh, believe God. In, the, in his word, that in every situation, he will bring us through triumph. So it could be, now let's say if it is healing, if it is a sickness, we believe that God heals. 
So we stand in triumph in believing. We take on that, you know, the spiritual truth of that and call that out into our natural. Or it could be maybe um, there isn't a job. You know, we call forth that victory because we triumph in Christ. Or it could be a difficult situation. Okay, We call forth the peace of God to uh, overcome the situation that may be irreversible. So we do see that, yes, there could be life's challenges. Some may be reversible. Some may not be reversible. But we believe what God's word has declared about us in that situation and become an overcomer because he is the one who leads us to triumph. So however um, um, difficult or bleak the situation may look like, we know that our hope is in the truth that we are overcomers and we can keep our eyes focused on the word of God. Okay. So what we've covered till now is we looked, know that challenges are in inevitable. There are different kinds of challenges we may all go through. Some are reversible, some are irreversible. Yet there is a truth that remains that God has called us to be overcomers. We are an overcomer because he's promised, Jesus has promised to overcome so that we can overcome. And we being born of God, the children of God can overcome situations, <clears throat> can triumph in situations in Christ, thereby diffusing his <clears throat> fragrance in the knowledge, uh, diffusing the fragrance of his knowledge in whatever situation we are in. Yet we keep hoping and praying and declaring God's word in situations um, which are reversible and, and wait for his hope and for his, his light to shine through that. Okay, um, we'll, uh, is there any question that any of you have? <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, Charles, you I think Charles have, uh, I'll just read out what Charles has said. He's written, uh, I wanted to say that when children start coming in a challenge, of struggling for love, time, and care sets in. Absolutely, yes. Uh, Kennedy's written old acquaintances too. Yeah, I think you, you did mean maybe old relationships that cause challenges, yes. Yes, Charles, we, let's uh, just pray that your, your net works well. Okay, a any questions? If not, we can take a 15-minute break and we will come back at uh, 10. It's 9.46 on my clock. We can return at 10 o'clock.